Okay everybody, this is the apparatus we would use if we were doing some experiments on light and how light passes through different shapes of glass or perspex or transparent materials. This is the apparatus we would use for doing experiments with refraction and reflection. So that's a ray box. A ray box usually comes with a slit that has one slit at one end and three slits at the other end. We're going to use a single slit so it fits in the front of the ray box and then the ray box gets connected to a lamp pack. A lamp pack gives us a safe voltage. We set it to 12 volts and I turn it on. So red and black terminals on the lamp pack, 12 volts or 13 volts if you like, so that we get a bright bulb and a single beam of light coming out of the single slit. And it might be easier if we turn the lights down a wee bit. Right, I've reduced the light level in the room and we can see that beam a little bit better. The first experiment is we're going to get a rectangular block and we're going to draw around it on a sheet of paper. So there's my rectangular block and I've just taken a pencil and I've traced around it on a sheet of printer paper. And we're going to shine light in to that rectangular block. Okay, I have dimmed the lights a wee bit more. And we can see that as the light goes into the Perspex block, it changes direction. I'm going to add a couple more lines to this diagram just to see if we can try and understand that a wee bit better. Right, I have traced the path of the ray passing through the Perspex block. There's the direction of the light as it goes into the glass and back out again. And to make this clearer, I've added a couple of dotted lines. These dotted lines are at right angles at 90 degrees to the side of the Perspex block. And it means when the ray of light goes into the glass, I can measure the angle that it makes to that dotted line, to that normal. Now to do that, I put a protractor on, and the zero on my protractor should be on the dotted line. Because if light was to travel into the glass along that dotted line, it would just pass straight through. So that normal line shows us what would happen when the light travels straight through the glass and carries on as normal. It would be undeflected. It wouldn't be bent if it passes through the normal. I'm going to show you that. That's the light traveling along the normal and it just carries on as normal through the glass. It's not bent at all. But if we shine it in at an angle to the normal, then when it goes into the glass, it gets bent towards the normal and then when it re-enters the air again, when it goes from glass to air, it gets bent away from the normal. Let's measure those angles, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, measuring angles is pretty tricky. You've always got to figure out how do I use my protractor. Where do I put the zero of my protractor? Well, the zero of the protractor, there's one at that end, there's one at the other end as well. So, which one are we going to use? Well, it really depends where your angle is. I'm going to put my protractor on here. So, you have to put one of those zeros, either that one, or that one, on the normal. And, you measure your angle between the normal, from that zero, to where your ray of light is. So, in this case, that angle is, I could even turn around, that angle is about 37 degrees or 38 degrees. Let me just see if I can get as close as I can. Difficult to measure angle. I think it's 38. 38 degrees. Okay, because we have to start at a zero. 10, 20, 30, it's just less than 40, so 38 degrees. That's the angle of the ray of light as it goes into the glass. Now, if we want to measure the angle in the glass, we turn our protractor around, 
at the center of the protractor at the normal and at the glass. So the center of the protractor is there. And again, we can start at zero and the angle here is mm, 24 degrees. 24, so that angle there, put my protractor on, follow the line out, protractor, it's got zero on the normal, that's about 24 degrees. As it goes from air into glass, the light bends towards the normal, the angle in the glass is smaller than the angle in the air. And if we measure those angles on the way back out again, turns out that angle is 24. And that angle is 38, so it bends away from the normal on the way back out. That's refraction, it bends towards the normal in the glass, away from the normal on the way out of the glass. I've got another shape, it's a semicircle this time, semicircular block. I've drawn round it, drawn round that perspex block, and I've drawn a dotted line halfway down that flat side. If I put that block on, turn on my ray box and shine light through it, if I shine the light along the normal, it just carries on as normal, comes straight out the other side. But if I shine it at an angle, if we trace that through, make sure your light is hitting exactly on the normal. If I just put a couple of dots here, one there, one there, same on the other side, one there, one there, and then join all that up, let's see what we get. There's my completed diagram. As the light goes from air into glass, it bends towards the normal. If I was to measure these with a protractor, then that first angle is about 43, and the other angle So again, the angle is smaller in the perspex. 43, 24. That's refraction. Now, one of the most useful applications of refraction is lenses. And there are two types of lenses that you should know about. This fella here. That bulges out the way is called a convex lens or a converging lens. And there's a little pal here. This one that caves in the way on both sides is called a concave lens. And you should know what happens to parallel rays of light when they pass through a convex or a concave lens. So I've arranged this ray box with the three slits and a little lens in front of it so that the three beams of light are parallel. If I didn't have that lens, those rays would be spreading out. But for this demo, I want them to be parallel. So I've put that little lens in. What happens if I was to put a convex lens in? So my convex lens bulges out the way. And there is our convex lens. It brings the light rays to a point. And if we could Make a little note of that point and make a little note of that distance. That distance to that point is called the focal length of the lens. Now that's quite a thick lens and therefore it has quite a short distance from the lens to the focal point or the focus. Let's call that focus. If I was to repeat that with a thinner convex lens. Let's see what happens. I have a thinner convex lens. Okay. If we compare that to this pal, there's the original one we use, and here is the next one we use. So it's much thinner. If I put it in the same position, the focal length this time is way over at the far end of the paper. So the distance to the focus is much greater with a thin lens. A thicker lens is more powerful. A thicker lens will focus the light 
in a shorter distance. That's a convex lens. A concave lens that caves in the way. There he is. That's how you remember it. Concave caves in the way. If I was to put that on my sheer paper, it spreads the light out the way. And the thicker the concave lens is, the more spreading it does. I've got his little brother here, who is a thinner concave lens. So see how much that one's spreading out? Change it. Put in his wee pal. Although it still spreads the light out, it doesn't spread it out as much. It's sometimes called a diverging lens. It diverts the light out of the way. And the thicker it is, then the more it diverts, or the more di divergence it causes. That's a concave lens. It spreads the light out. And those lenses are used in spectacles, glasses, for people that either can't see distant objects or can't see objects close up. Now, if we're talking about refraction, we should, of course, talk about this guy, the triangular prism. What happens when you shine a beam of white light into a triangular prism? Or this, I will dim the lights. And show you one of the most amazing things in science. When you shine white light through a triangular prism, there's my prism. There is the white light shining into the prism. You just arrange it. And when you come down this way, you can see that we get a spectrum. All the colours of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. A spectrum of light from pure white light that has passed through a prism. That's magic. 